The topics we discuss are many. No story too bold to talk about. Strictly our own opinions. But they are opinions from people like you. Welcome Welcome to to the the Naked Naked Podcast. Podcast. I guess we had to go back to reality sometime. It's Norma. Hey, you know who hasn't died yet? This guy. It's Ethan. Guess who still gets her birthday check through USPS? It's your girl, Keelan. Guess who won't be sending out any checks at all? Liberty University. It's your DM tech guy, Alan. What do you mean? So, where do I start? So, Liberty University is actually under a lot of fire by all of the uh, students and the students' families because the students are demanding a refund and they're refusing it to give it to them at this point because they kept announcing that oh the school is going to be open come over here and do this oh classes will start back up on um after spring break we will be open and then they had to close the doors because you know parents started to get concerned that they were going to get COVID 19 well now there's a class action lawsuit against them demanding that the university pay back their 15,000 students so basically they're saying you didn't provide the services I needed. Mm-hmm. Give me back some money. And it's services that they can't use anyway, like the parking fees, the uh, garage fees, board and tuition fees. Like it's, there's several things. Meal plans, maybe. Yeah. Meal plans, the rec center fees, everything. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. Well, I heard or, you know, I haven't gone through the system, so I don't really know, but they were saying... So some of these schools, they people are paying fifty thousand in tuition, and then on top of mm-hmm. it, they're paying like twenty thousand for room and board. And if mm-hmm. that's the case, I see them paying back the room and board, or like you're talking the cafeteria fees or any other parking fees like that. But tuition, I, I don't see them getting back because it's like if all else fails, if if a U.S. school can't issue or if, what is it? If something happens to the school and they can't give you classes, they have to issue the diploma automatically. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't know that. Congratulations, <laughs> freshmen. <laughs> yeah, like they talked about, like, there. it hasn't happened in 100 years or whatever. But when one of the major colleges burned down, they weren't able to have graduation or have classes or anything. You know, the school's gone. So they just had mm-hmm. every currently enrolled student had to be ha- given a diploma. Because they can't continue. I, I know things are a lot different <laughs> now, but he, he, you know nothing. But good luck. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I really That's crazy. I mean, think about how much of his experience, anyway. The plums are usually just a paper. Yeah, yeah I just a really expensive paper. A <laughs> really, really expensive paper. I just, I think it's really bad handling on the school's part. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm going to a community college and I'm going to a university and even though it is online, so it's a far different situation than the kids that are, were living on campus. You know, now Mm -hmm. they can't stay there. Now they don't have their room and board. Now a lot of them don't have anywhere to go. Um, So there was actually a lot of issues with that. Um, With uh, initially when, when they had said that they weren't going to issue refunds they only issued refunds to students who were living on campus and they had to opt in for it in like march 29th or march 30th so a lot of other people who went to the classes and went to the stuff they got fucked and they couldn't they couldn't qualify for the for the thousand dollar refund yeah but at the same time i already had a stash of food in february so cry me a river (laughs) (laughs) i mean that's one way to look at it i mean i remember when everyone was just like oh like get over it like it's not that big of a deal and then look at us now and this was that was literally a month ago a month ago look how much has changed it's not that bad it's so harmless it's got us sitting indoors and we're laughing at all those people now (laughs) (laughs) haha I mean, I mean, it's this has. I mean, we've talked about this before, but this is really going to push a lot of businesses to be, you know, like 
the elite, this is like the survival of the fittest right now. Like the, the top most needed are going to survive. And the ones that were on their way out, see you later. Thank you for your service. But, you know, as I think it's a good thing, I'm, I'm going to be positive and look at it. Right now, a lot of these major corporations that have just been barely making it by are finally going to be put to rest. We'll have, you know, some bad debt off the ledgers. We'll have more people out actually working for small businesses, and hopefully small businesses are able to come in and fill the hole that the major corporations leave. Well, it may not... It may be a little bit tougher for smaller businesses because a lot of small businesses use USPS, and USPS is, like, on the chopping block um, yeah. come September. So, real quick. Tinfoil hat time. What uh. if... They restructure the United States Postal Service into an email service. That'd be really badass. No. I like that idea. So if you need to set up a free email to get your <laughs> bills sent to and all that other stuff, instead of you going and signing up for a Gmail, you sign mm-hmm. up at you know United, or USPS.com or whatever. I mean, a lot of a lot of bills are already audit like you know automated. You know, like they're just very was it printer free or paperless? Paperless, yeah, yeah. paperless. <laughs> so I mean, we can. It has that's part of the reason why USPS has faced a lot of tough times lately is because we don't use mail as much, but it is something that is used. I just think that they have tried to keep it too affordable. And if if it does stay around, they do figure it out, they're going to have to do some major work to completely revamp their system. But I don't know if emails would be something that they would do. Although that's, that's an ambition, ambitious plan. No, uh, I, I don't think an email system would work out. I just think moving to handle more of digital mail would be a better need for these. I mean, I, they have an app and everything already. Okay, let me let me ask you this. It USPS doesn't have like the resources to do it. So what if a third party came in to help them set up a data infrastructure like Google, would you still be for that plan? No. Not if Google has their hands on it. I, Google cannot I, have their hands on that. Yeah, in my aspect, it would be like this is one of the government functions I think government should handle is mail. And so mm-hmm. if our government reabsorbed the usps back in united states postal service you know and treated as a government agency like it used to be and they had a email you know and and they functioned as an email service instead of a letter you know paper service i would be okay with that i would be too and you you can always get into your email even if you're at a different address Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm that makes sense. It would definitely open up a lot more jobs in government for um, IT for IT because that that'd be like a big headache. But the other question is, how would they be able to to afford that if people are using uh, emails less? Like, w- would they sell <clears throat> would they sell like uh, cloud storage or something of that sort? It would have to be something that it's a requirement. Yeah, like something that's lawfully a requirement, like having a driver's license or you know something. Yeah, like that. well, that's what I'm saying. Like. Instead of registering your, you know, light or your house address with the United States <coughs> Postal Service, you address you you set up to register an email address with them, and you get you know your CPS bill sent there, you get your government form sent there. So I don't know, keeps it a little more. But then what about like you go to the DMV and you have to have three bills in your name at your address. But they would have access well, to it because it's a government agency. Yeah, they'd be able to pull that up. And even if you don't receive mail at your address, they still have to address it to you at a like actual residence. But e- even if bills are sent to you or through email anyway, you can just print it or mm-hmm. have some type of barcode or something. Yeah. Like your order receipt or your, like your confirmation that you paid. Yeah. <clears throat> what if you don't have access to internet how are you access your email no you're not you're not eliminating the current service the problem with the united states postal service is there there's not enough work for the people to handle it right 
So you give them another branch to handle and they can still operate. You know, you can still have everything set up as it is now. So mailboxes won't become obsolete. So, mail, yeah, you would still have a mailbox. You would actually probably yeah. have a bigger mailbox because the United States Postal Service would be delivering bigger packages. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, USPS had to cut deals in the past and there were pretty bad deals like with Amazon, um, you know, setting up with other carriers such as UPS where there where USPS is a final mile carrier. But they're really getting the shitty end of that stick because it's it's not the bulk of the cost of shipping. Um, yeah. So I think like those, those decisions are, you know, but that w- they're not cost saving in the long run. A lot of this, like the reasons they had to make that deal was because they were focused on letters, right? They delivered a letter. Mm-hmm. It took the United States Postal Service a good moment to shift to deliver packages. So if they want to stay relevant, they're going to have to shift again. So they're going to have to be able to handle packages and light papers to your house. And they'll have an email service deliver all the junk letters and all that other bullshit. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You have op- like, I don't I see it just the only natural progression for them. And they have to be reliable shipping partners because mm-hmm. everybody who is in any type of retail knows like, oh, USPS is such a headache. You know, to deal with like to track or to get a hold of or to figure things out. I mean, even today. <clears throat> I have a package that I set up a pickup for. It sat out on my porch all day long. Yep. They didn't pick it up. Yeah. So they, they need an overhaul for sure. Um, but, I mean, times are changing. Mm-hmm. When you have oil drop below a dollar. Uh, was it drop below zero? Yeah, it, it was negative a dollar. One dollar. And 43 cents. Oh, my God. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever heard that in my life. The la- According to the resource that I was reading, and it was... Uh, I forgot which, I know. which news source it was, but they said that the last time it dropped below a dollar was like in the 1920s. So, before the Great Depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this is the scary yeah, part, you know. So, okay. I'm going to go off on a slight tangent for the moment. But me and Keelan were talking about this, that maybe time flows in a signed wave. And that's why we see reoccurring events. So. Oh, my God. What? Oh, fuck. And then the yeah, point. I mean, time is not what, linear. 1920. 19. That's why time sometimes feels faster, sometimes feels slower. Because, you know, that's how sign. It's basic electricity. The slope, yeah, is how a sine, yeah. a sine wave is. So mm. it's safe to say, yeah, that's why now you see like China. They say is kind of mobilizing for the next style of war. War. So, <laughs> <laughs> which obviously should be a bio weapon. I mean, I, would be. A I bio, mean, look at coronavirus. Yeah, which would be a bio weapon, and then. After the bioweapons released, it would be a scramble for resources, which China's pretty much locked down in countries all over the world. Like, they went in and did things for people like, oh, let's set up your 5G network, but we need this as collateral. And they take a mine or they take this resource storage. Or it, It's really scary once you start getting into what all they've claimed the last couple of years. And they played the long game. Yeah, they did. They really did. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see. I don't know. Not a lot of people are on the road right now, but hopefully that changes as we work to reopen. Yeah. If we reopen. <laughs> when we reopen. When we reopen. Yeah. You're right. We got to be positive. Yeah. I I think it's coming. I, I think people are going to learn. and The social distancing has kind of taken effect on a lot of places. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been so nice not to be at a register and there's a dude breathing down your back. Oh. Yeah. Uh. I feel like people aren't as much <clears throat> in a, of in a hurry anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, from our t- bedroom, like our on the second floor, we can we never used to be able to see 410 from our window. And now we can. Every day we can see the interchange and there's nobody on it. Except for last night. There are more people on it than previously. It used to be empty at night. 
Yeah, there's been a lot more people out on the road the last couple of days, but it's hasn't gone too crazy. Like I haven't hit traffic yet. There hasn't been traffic. It, I think a lot of retailers are, are like people are just going to have at home positions because it's so cost effective. I'm, I I mean I can say not having a facility, not having to pay for maintenance, not having to worry about supplies. You know, your employees have to supply like their area. I mean, that's just a major cost saving measure. You see, you'd think that, but there are several companies that I've seen on Reddit and several other people reporting that their jobs still want them to start going back to the office as soon as they can. Like, they, they, I don't know if it's a boomer mentality where if you're not here, you're not working, but I just, I think that the natural progression for us is to move at home. That's how you eliminate a lot of problems. Especially harassment at the workplace. Like, who's going to fucking harass you while you're at home? Your dog to go out? Uh. Yeah, right? You can do your work. Then you can take some time off. You can de-stress. You know, you can go play in your garden. Or you can go take a walk around the block. You know, walk your dog. Exactly. I was going to say, if you have a cough, you don't have to worry about infecting other people in the workplace. Yeah. Like, I'm legit thinking about talking to my boss and just saying, hey... You know, ever since this, would you be all right with me working one day from home? You know, one random day of my choice, what have you. Like, I, I think that'd be, like, a really good step in the right direction. Yeah. I really feel that I've been a lot mentally healthier working from home. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, a lot of people are all, I just, it's, I have to laugh because I've worked from home for so long. And it's kind of like, yeah, it sucks. Then you get used to it. And then you don't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd love to work from home. I just, Thanks. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I, I couldn't stand being cooped up that much. I'm a natural introvert. I'm an extroverted introvert. So I get my socialization when I need to. <laughs> but then I I go home <laughs> and I recharge. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I do have to say that working at home, it's been really nice. Yeah, it's been nice. If I could, if I could work from home, I would sell everything and buy a big or a comfortable RV, and we just travel. Fuck yeah! Put me on a shipping container. I'm going overseas. <laughs> <laughs> How would your internet connection look like? Satellite. <laughs> I think I'm going a little stir crazy. I did end up shaving part of my head. Oh my gosh, I love it though. You're so she brave. She went a quarter Britney Spears. <laughs> it's Britney, bitch. <laughs> yeah. But being 29, I finally understand. Yeah, seriously, I do. I get Britney now. Like at this stage in life, you're like, meh. Like, <laughs> Pretty what much. is life? And have y'all seen what she's been doing for everybody? Like she's having her fans message her if they're having a hard time. She's sending money for groceries or sending groceries to their house. She's oh, that's nice posting she's about. actually being helpful yeah and it's just like sweet and uplifting and she's like hey i've been through shit like this come on guys we got this oh <laughs> that's so wholesome i love that's that that's really nice our princess of pop mm -hmm. yeah i've actually enjoyed the it? outcry uh, or not outcry <gasps> but the outpour of support from some people like mm -hmm. uh john krasinski Mm -hmm. Some good news. And some oh, good news. Some good news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Or uh, Ryan Reynolds and all his shit talking. You know, like those are positive. <laughs> that keeps people going. I don't give a fuck mm -hmm. about your ice cream. <laughs> you know. Do you think that um, some good news will actually turn into like a real show? Oh, I think it'll become a decent web show. Like I honestly think so. Yeah, he's he has, he's already got directing background. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want it to become like a full fledged production. I want him to keep it, you know, low budget, <coughs> high from stars, and not yeah. become. It's big. really real. Yeah, it's I, not I like... see. I see him a guy by himself with a green screen in his studio <laughs> basement. <laughs> Literally, yeah. what's behind you right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I put mine away for this. <laughs> <laughs> Even with all this news going on, we hope that you are staying healthy, whether that is physically and mentally. Um, we love you here at the Naked Podcast. Yeah, please stay home. Be safe. 
don't be a fool with your pants on the ground. Wear a mask. Yeah, wear a mask. Binge listen to the Naked Podcast. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you listeners are the only reason we do this. So stay safe, stay alive, and have fun. And uh, I will pick up my streaming, seeing how I have nowhere else to go. I'm going to be streaming at mixture.com slash peachz, and I can't wait for you. You know what's cool? Tacos Coffee supporting small creators. Hey. <laughs> Please support us on our Patreon. At www.officialmillennials.com. <laughs> Perfectly done. You ruined my phrase. I was trying to come up with a phrase. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, though, you know what's cool? <laughs> come watch me on Mixer, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> this, this is an, an official, official Millennials production. production.